Hi. I'd like to say something about Ice T's comments on the Bill Maher show of about a week ago when he was reprimanding Bill Maher and others who have used the N word. First of all, I should say, I don't use the word. In fact, I cringe and I pity people who use the word when they are people of color. I'm very serious about words, so it will be very difficult for any of you to detract from this with any sincerity or success if you listen carefully. Let me show you how serious I am about words. Unless it is involving scientific parlance, I don't use the word animal. That's how much I respect all living beings. I think that by calling other species animals, we are engaging in the use of a pejorative, which is a leftover, a holdover, a word that illustrates our supposed superiority over other creatures, and the scientific and video evidence is building daily all around the world showing that other species, especially mammals, seem to be sentient, capable of love, they show evidence of society, they certainly show the evidence of using tools, cooperation, there's even interspecies friendship and help. So I don't talk about other species that way for the emphasis necessary in this sentence, I should digress or lower from my own principle and say I don't even talk about animals in a denigrating way. And now let me raise myself back up to where I think my mind belongs. I call all species, species. I don't use the word race. I have made multiple essays, multiple poems, and multiple videos saying that for my personal set of morals, the word race is stupid. And I've encouraged politicians and artists and common citizens of every type to stop using the word race because it's a misnomer that describes ethnicity and includes biological attributes which only scientifically can be proven to be shallow phenotypical expressions of DNA which don't affect behavior and so therefore we should refer to the different groups of people as ethnicities or religious groups or cultures. So it stands to reason that when it comes to people of color, I don't even use the word black. I resent the term white. I'm not white. Yes, we could joke and say, man, you are white. Yes, <laughs> I'm white complected, but it doesn't describe my mindset. It doesn't describe my empiricism, my atheism, my Zen compassion or my Buddhism. It doesn't, it, it doesn't describe my humanity. Okay. It doesn't describe my behavior, and it certainly doesn't describe much privilege. As a descendant of Italian and Irish Americans, I haven't felt much privilege in my life. Now, you could write an essay or do a video or make a movie delineating how I did have privilege in contrast to people who didn't, but I don't feel like I have, and that makes all the difference to me. I consider myself a human being, a member of the species Homo, rather the species Sapiens, and... and uh, the genus Homo. All human beings are my brothers and sisters. I love them, even when I dislike them. And so, to me, and this brings me to my point, even though I can stand in sentimental umbrage with Ice-T when he was talking to Bill Maher, I stand intellectually against him, and I'll tell you why. All words are words which means they are phoneme representations of ideas, which means, as William Carlos Williams said, they are broken wheelbarrows. They are not efficient descriptors of how we really feel or of concepts. They are approximations. As such, they're not harmful out of context. So no one and no group can own a word. Ice-T, in his gentle diatribe tirade chastising of Bill Maher, said, this was your word, and he meant the people of the Caucasian races that enslaved the Africans. He said, now it's ours and you can't have it back. Conceptually, I agree with him. We shouldn't use or own that word to hurt people. 
However, in the way that Bill Maher used the word, thoughtless people don't pick up on this, but he was trying to make a point, which he won't defend now because he just wants to save his TV show and his career. He was placing himself among the oppressed peoples, even though in their opposition they would say he doesn't deserve to put himself in that group, and so on. Senator Ben Sass had made a comment that Bill should come and work in his state, and Bill made a joke. If people were paying attention, the butt of the joke was that the conservative people in Ben Sass's state, who in the past have been ethnocentric, the real word that should be used instead of the stupid word racist, the people who were prejudiced, the people who were bigoted, it was a jab at them. That's my best approximation of understanding what Bill Maher was saying. He said, I'm a house N. And he meant, if I were to be a slave, I'd be on the inside. So he was making a joke that I'm among the better slaves. He was saying that he's a slave. Now, we all know Bill Maher is a rich comedian and TV personality. But we also know that many activists actors and many activist artists think of themselves in another compartment of their mind and in their heart as down with the oppressed peoples. And that's what he meant. He wasn't using it as a barb. He wasn't using it as a jab. Now, in defense of this kind of use of the word, which I still wouldn't do, I will offer up another experience that people can find on YouTube. In Talking Funny with Jerry Seinfeld, Ricky Gervais, Chris Rock, and Louis C.K., part of the discussion comes to a point where Chris Rock is telling Louis C.K. that he is the enterist N he knows. Now, I should be able to use the word, but I almost feel like a person afraid to draw the Muhammad cartoons right now. That's how bad it has gotten in America. In the right context, a word is harmless. In the right context, which we would call the wrong context, a word is harmful. If I'm using the N-word now as I am in a video essay, I should be able to use it. But I can't because I'm trying to abide by the tyranny that has been set up by Ice-T and others. When, when Bill Maher used the word, everybody knows how he meant it. But people of color who are on about more than equality, they're now on about soapbox power, and they want to turn that into real power over other people, they're saying you can't use the word at all, which doesn't make any just sense. It's not just. You can't control a language. Remember what I said earlier. A word is innocent. It's harmless. It's empty, out of context. It's just a word. If I had one of those magnetized words on my refrigerator right now, that's all it would be is a magnetized word until you put it into a sentence and more so, until you employ emotion and meaning, it's harmless. It would be like people of color eventually saying you can't use the letter N either because it's part of the N word. That's what it's like. That's really what it's like. Because a word, as I said earlier, is the phoneme construction of sounds associated with meanings. And that word has different meanings, the proof of which, and here's my next point, people of color use the word. Now, you may say, don't go there, Carl. These people can use the word, people like you cannot. If they can use the word, that means the word can have different meanings depending on who's using it and depending on the context. They should apply that same reasoning fairly, and then they wouldn't have been so angry at Bill Maher. It was okay to caution him on it. It wasn't okay to chastise him to the point of saying, that's our word and you can't use it. It's a word. A word is a phoneme representation of sounds equated to a meaning or set of meanings. It's not a thing with meaning in and of itself until translated in a sentence. It has to have context around it. Why am I talking about all this? Why does it matter? Just make a list of things you don't say and let that list get longer and longer and longer. After all, Carl, you said you have things you don't say. 
because this kind of control, saying that one group of people can use a word and another group can't, is hypocritical. It's tyrannical. It's illogical. And it's unjust. Again, just for people who aren't paying attention or who might be a little slow, I'm not saying that I want to use the word. I don't use the word. Another word I don't use is the B word. I don't use the word bitch. It doesn't mean anything bad in and of itself. If you look it up in the dictionary, it means a female dog in heat. But the word has come to mean, in the vernacular, an angry woman. And so I don't use the word, generally. I mean, there have been times when I've lost my temper and then I've apologized, but I generally don't use the word. I don't use the N-word. I'm not advocating the use of these words, but I am in fierce opposition to people saying that they can use the word while others can't. That doesn't make any sense, and it isn't just. And if that continues, you will have control of one group over another through language. And that is what we have in terms of that word. If we all could go around doing that, every aggrieved group on earth, of which every group is one, would be saying that there are words that other people can't use because the other people have wronged them. And this would lead us to a stifling of the language, which we know about because political correctness has already begun this tyranny in America. Now, finally, I want to say, the last bastion of hope in this atmosphere of tyranny of language and degrading of intellect is comedy. Bill Maher not only said the sentence in a nuanced way that required intellectual understanding and compassion, he said it as a comedian. In comedy, everything is okay. That's why Kathy Griffin's demonstration illustrating the anger level that people have at Donald Trump and their distaste and how much they want him punished, not to death in reality, but to death in humor, in satire, that's why that is okay too and has to be allowed. Comedy is the last place we can say whatever we want without apology because the disclaimer at the beginning says that anybody listening accepts the idea that it's only a joke and not meant seriously. It's not meant for policy, social or political, governmental or military, martial or, or otherwise. Comedy is meant to make people laugh and even more than literature, it allows us to look at something straight because we immediately laugh, which is visceral proof of the truth inherent in the joke, which means there's truth inherent in the idea of the joke, which means that the artist, the comedian, has conveyed to you a truism, whether it's right or wrong. And this allows us enormous intellectual flexibility to discuss everything as an intelligent species. So as an intelligent species, we should not be limiting our communication in words, especially in comedy. Thank you.